accuracy is important, but where you're gonna really see this make a difference for you is in the speed mode part of practice. Accuracy mode just means that we only care about accurate shots, whatever it takes to get an accurate hit. Time is basically not a consideration. So with speed mode, the idea is to develop speed. So we throw accuracy out the window, it, speed mode practice. That's basically what it looks like for me in dry fire practice. Right now, it's about the draw, it's about getting on target, it's about gripping appropriately and maintaining a solid position with the gun and dry fire, it all works together. If you never practice to get faster at doing things like this, you won't get faster automatically. It doesn't just happen. What I'm gonna do now is walk you through one of the most critical methods of training that I use in dry fire. And I gotta give some credit or credits due to some influential guys in the industry. This is where I learned some of the stuff from. So first off, Steve Anderson, that shooting show podcast. Steve Anderson has a great series of dry fire books and he talks religiously about speed mode, accuracy mode, and match mode. And I'm gonna explain what those are today. And also Scott Jedlinski, who uses a similar methodology and talks about accuracy mode, speed mode, and instead he usually refers to it as real mode practice. So again, I'll explain what those are, but this is a critical way of approaching dry fire practice for developing skill. Accuracy is important, but where you're gonna really see this make a difference for you is in the speed mode part of practice. But we can't overlook the importance of bridging that skill development on the speed side of the equation and bringing it back together with an acceptable level of accuracy and putting it together in a package that's known as match mode or real mode. And that's where we have to be accountable for the drill that we're doing and the shots that we're firing. And the way we are accountable is by being completely invested in what we see in our sight picture. First, what we're going to talk about is that first mode of, of practice, which is accuracy mode. It should also be recognized that accuracy mode, speed mode, and match or real mode not only applies in dry fire practice, but also in live fire practice. So there's times at the range, actually most of the time I spend practicing at the range, I identify before I shoot a particular drill or mini stage or whatever, I identify whether I am working on accuracy mode, speed mode, or match or real mode before I shoot that drill. So let me define what these different modes of practice are. Number one, accuracy mode. Accuracy mode just means that we only care about accurate shots, whatever it takes to get an accurate hit. Time is basically not a consideration. We throw the speed factor out the window and everything is focused on making accurate hits, all right? When I'm doing accuracy mode practice, I don't even use a shot timer. It's just purely about getting the repetitions. But the focus is on making a perfect shot. Right, I just used a little aiming point on the wall over there. You probably heard two beeps from my shot timer there, which I already had it preset for a part time of 1.5 seconds, but you'll note that I ignored it. Okay. Typically when I'm doing accuracy mode, I just turn off part time and I'm just going to focus completely on the process of making a perfect shot. Okay. Doing perfect repetitions, gripping appropriately, minimizing movement in the gun, pressing the trigger without disturbing the alignment of the gun. That's the idea of accuracy mode is just reinforcing the base essential skills that it takes to put a shot exactly where we want it. All right. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time today doing accuracy mode practice. In fact, you can go back and review a number of previous Shooter Rate Challenge videos where we do some of the more accuracy focused stuff as well. We use the built-in challenges in the LaserX software and those have built into them an accuracy mode, a speed mode, and a real mode component, even though it doesn't label those as such. Accuracy mode, focus on good hits, all right? So now let's switch over to speed mode. And this is really where for me, I have found a lot of gains in my personal skill building. This is a great opportunity to work on developing speed because we're not really penalized in dry fire practice by going fast. There's no inherent risk to it. We're not 
taking chances. In fact, this is a great way to build up repetitions and speed in a safe manner to where we don't have to be concerned of, uh, we're building that muscle memory, if you will, as is the common term, to do all that safely and get to that place where I can do it at that speed and now I can take it to the range because I've already done hundreds or thousands of repetitions safely at home. If we had a safety violation during practice, we'd wanna sit back and analyze what happened and how and why that happened. Meaning that if for some reason coming out of the holster quickly, I got on the trigger early or something, we wanna make sure we're paying attention and watching for that. But no time do we want to throw away safety Safety is always important and dry fire is also a great place to also practice safety. But again, there's no penalty. There's no, nobody getting hurt from dry fire practice as long as we've made sure that we did what? Made sure we removed live ammunition from the area we're practicing and checked and double checked and maybe even triple checked our equipment to make sure we have no, am, uh, no ammunition in magazines or any ammunition in the chambers of our guns. You see I have a couple of guns on the table here and I might be switching back and forth from a couple of these, but we've checked them. My camera guys checked along with me, so we want to follow all safety procedures. But back to speed mode. So with speed mode, the idea is to develop speed. So we throw accuracy out the window. It, it's not relevant. We're just focused on the motor skills necessary to get my hand to gun out a holster up in front of my, my chest, hands meeting up on the grip, and extending out to target, and we wanna be able to, ideally we wanna see the sights, right? And, and it's a good idea to check that occasionally, but it's actually irrelevant. I just wanna go through the motions and see what I can do speed-wise, right? So what I have here is my shot timer set up with a part time of 1.5 seconds, which is actually a very slow pace for me to start at, especially for my competition gear. But just to give you an idea of how some of you might start, and you, want, you might want to start with two seconds as a part-time, maybe even longer than that. I'm just going to start at 1.5 today, and then we'll work our way down. So I would do either, say, 20 or 30 repetitions, or I would do it for, pick a, pick a number, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, or maybe two minutes even. Okay? And I'm gonna do that, say, for 60 seconds. Again and again, just wash, rinse, repeat. Here we go again. Okay, it's actually really good exercise for me to just to go through the motions here at that speed, because 1.5 feels really slow to me. Okay, so, that's what we're gonna do for 60 seconds or for 20 reps, your choice, whatever's easiest for you to keep track of. I just like working with the time limits now. All right, so that's 1.5 seconds. So now I'm gonna go ahead and change my part time. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump all the way down. To, I'm gonna jump down to 1.2. Let's give that a go. All right. So when we're doing a when we're using a shot timer in dry fire practice like this, we want to we have to be totally accountable to ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. So as I'm doing this, I'm paying attention to that timer, not only to the beginning beep, but also that stop beep, the ending beep, and making sure that I'm getting that trigger pressed before I hear that second beep. And then I gotta be honest with myself. Did I get that done within that 1.2 seconds or not? And if not, that's the why we're doing this. We're, we're, we're continuing to push ourselves in this speed mode of practice. And so with speed mode practice, I like to pick, think of it as a baseline. So pick a baseline time, a time that you know you can do pretty consistently. Think of it as a warm up, essentially, right? That it's, it's a comfortable pace that you can start at and then you just start chiseling your way down. So we were doing 1.2 seconds. Zero. And I'm now going to Zero. Zero. change this to one second part time. So let's go to one second and let's see how, what that looks like. Here we go. Okay, that was well within the part time. Okay, so no problems there. Do that for 60 seconds or two minutes or 20 or 30 reps. I, I like doing, typically if I'm doing reps, I like to do at least about 20 reps. 10 reps, I just don't think is quite enough to achieve what we're trying to achieve, personally speaking. So we'll do that at one, one second. So now 
I might start stepping this down in 0.9s and 0.8s and down to 0.7, that sort of thing. And in my personal dry fire practice for my competition rig, I'm able to get this down. I push myself down to about a 0.55. Occasionally I'll set it for 0.5 and just see if I can do it. And sometimes I hit it, but not consistently. So you can see that's where I'm at. And I don't think I'm gonna really take much of that much more of that time off because there's a point where we just hit the absolute limit of human function. There's some guys I'm sure they're faster than me, but I also have to recognize that there's other skill sets that I could be applying my attention and time and resources to. So getting down to a 0 0.55, 0 0.6 draw from my outside waistband competition holster, that's very respectable and I'm happy with that. But I still constantly work at this, okay? Because that's the idea of developing skill. All right, so let's go ahead and set this now to 0.8 so you can see Zero. what 0 0.8 looks like. Zero. Zero. And again, we're not concerned about accuracy. So I'm not looking at my target on the wall here. I, I'm just looking mostly at a blank wall here using to guide me somewhat. I have a, a point, an object on the wall there that I'm using to aim at, but I am paying attention and just seeing, okay, was that, was my dot on the target or not? Okay, and it's just a good question to ask. If it wasn't, then I ask myself, where was it? Was it left? Was it high? Was it low? That sort of thing. So I can start analyzing got to make little micro adjustments maybe to my grip or something in my presentation so I can clean that up a little bit. But again, it's not because accuracy is the focus. That is it, secondary in this. The, the point of speed mode practice is to push the speed. So let's go 0.8. Here we go. All right, so that's, I was racing out there pretty good, which meant when I got to my, the end of my extension, there's a little bit of a jiggle. So I wanna actually work on that a little bit. This is good to work on in speed mode as well. That was better. Let's clean it up a little bit more still. Yeah. So that was a nice draw. I'm well within that 0.8 par time limit that I set for myself. I'm obviously from here gonna chisel it down some more. Go 0.7 down to 0.6 as I continue to work on my personal skill growth and development. Again, for you, you might start at two seconds and go 1.9, 1.8, 1.7. Maybe you get to 1.5 and that's all you can do right now. That's your absolute limit. But you always wanna be pushing the, the boundaries there, okay? Because that's the point of speed mode is to get you to the next goal marker or goal post. So, speed mode practice. That's basically what it looks like for me in dry fire practice. Let's put this together now with doing a build drill. And the reason why we're gonna do a build drill today is because last month's drill was mostly focused on a single shot. So we're gonna mix it up a little bit and we're gonna push ourselves to see what we can do in dry fire practice in, ter in terms of shooting a build drill. Build drill is shot in live fire at seven yards on a USPSA or IDPA target trying to shoot it clean, not dropping any shots. And the gold standard is to do it in two seconds or less. So just like I would in live fire with my build drill and dry fire, I would approach this, the practice the same way. First, I would learn what it takes to get six clean hits on my target repeatedly, okay? Accuracy mode practice, don't worry about the speed that it takes, just focus entirely on my dot or my sights and seeing six good shots and do that a number of times. Then that's, what's that's what that's gonna do is it's going to teach my, I'm gonna learn for myself that, hey, I have what it takes to shoot a build drill cleanly. Okay, that's not an issue. Now it's just about how fast can I shoot that build drill. So then we start trying to establish where that baseline is. So you wanna get a shot timer, run the timer, go as fast as you think you can, and start getting a measure of about where you're at speed wise with all six clean hits, all right? And then that would be my baseline, and that's where I would work on. You might start 0.1 or 0.2 hundredths or tenths of a second above that as a sort of a warm up during your dry fire practice, but then you're gonna wanna bring that back down to the baseline and then beyond the baseline and really push yourself. So in speed mode practice, let's go ahead and set our par time I'm going to set my par time for 1.7 seconds, which is pretty, pretty speedy for a build drill. But we're assuming that I've already done a bunch of repetitions to work my way down to, this, is, this would be the level where I'm starting to push myself a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go 1.7 seconds. Now, what am I going to do? I recognize I'm using a striker fired gun. Okay, and so I'm going to get one click, 
but then I don't get any more clicks. But you'll see my trigger goes back and forth and I'm gonna just keep working the trigger. Six, uh, you know, If you're shooting a pistol like a Glock that doesn't have a trigger that returns forward on its own, then just m move your finger back and forth six times. Okay, simulate those trigger presses. Try to use about the same pressure that you would in an actual trigger press and do it six times. This is a common practice done in dry fire practice, especially by competitive shooters. Okay, because we can learn trigger presses in other, at other times. Okay, we can learn what that trigger feels like and, and the pressure we need to apply. That can be done separately. Right now, what we're working on is the speed aspect of what it takes to get gun out of the holster, on target, and pressing the trigger six times. Okay? Just trust me, it works. All right, so 1.7 seconds, here we go. Okay? So that was six trigger presses. I would guess, judging by when the second beep went, that I was done in about 1.6, 1.65. So let's go ahead and just push myself a little bit more, just see what we can do. Let's go 1.6. Here we go. 1.6. There we go, six trigger presses. Forgot to reset my striker for that first one. Let's really push it, let's go 1.5. Let's see if we can get 1.5 in. And for what it's worth, I know I can absolutely do 1.5. I've done a build drill down to about 1.3 in dry fire practice like this. Here we go. Okay. Six trigger presses, got it done within the 1.5. That just gives you an idea of how we would work in speed mode as we are working on something like the build drill. Now, I know some of you out there are watching this, this video and saying, but Riley, hey, there's no recoil here. So this isn't happening. We're not having to control the gun, getting it back on target. That's all irrelevant right now. Right now, it's about the draw. It's about getting on target. It's about gripping appropriately and maintaining a solid, position with the gun, holding it still, as we do this six times very rapidly. That's what it's about. In live fire on the range, we can work on the recoil control aspect of it. But in dry fire, it's about everything else. And this all, it all works together. If you never practice to get faster at doing things like this, you won't get faster automatically. It doesn't just happen. Okay, so that's what this is all about. Let's just suppose that now we want to start getting some metrics out of this, some data, something that actually gives us some realistic performance data. Now, realistic meaning that it's realistic in terms of it, it holds me accountable for shots on my target here so that the software is watching for those six shots and showing me where they would be in theory. And then it's giving me the associated times or splits with those different shots as well. That's going to, I can use that as I continue to work on my skill. This becomes for me in dry fire, the first uh, opportunity where I can test or vet or verify if what I'm doing in my dry fire practice is working or not. And then we can take it to the live fire range and verify my performance there as well, where it's, act, where it's truly realistic in terms of we're getting recoil, we're getting the full experience. But I can get some usable data from a system and a practice like this without expending a lot of rounds so that we're making our time at the range more efficient. Even when we are in dry fire and we're not using the LaserX software yet, we can still be accountable for our theoretical hits by making sure we are totally invested in what we see in our site picture. The way this would look is, and this is the beginning of incorporating real mode or match mode practice into what I'm doing, whether it's dry fire or live fire practice. The thing that I'm able to be accountable to is my sights. That's my visual feedback as I'm shooting the gun that tells me whether I'm on target or not. I can do that even in dry fire. So looking at my target here, I wanna keep everything in the A zone. And my sole focus when I'm going to be shooting in match mode or real mode is to keep my red dot on my pistol within that A zone for every six presses of the trigger that I take, okay? And then I have to be honest with myself to say, what, shots one and two were good, shot three, my red dot drifted off to the left or the right or it went low or whatever and then I got it back for four, five, and six, or whatever, okay? 
It's important that we truly pay attention to our sights or our dot whenever, you know, whenever we're trying to practice in real mode. And we got to tell ourselves, yes, that was an acceptable one. So I've got my shot timer still set at 1.5 seconds. And so this is going to be pretty spicy. So here we go. I'm going to watch my dot for every shot. Okay, I don't know if I quite got within the 1.5. Felt like probably about 1.6. But my red dot stayed within the A zone on my target there for every one of those shots. That's really good. So I'm going as fast as I can keep my sights where they are acceptable in terms of hits. I don't expect to be able to go at the same level of speed that I did in speed mode. Now that I'm bringing accuracy back into it, we expect to, to lose a little bit of time, right? Because that's only fair. So let's do it again. Again, I had this set at 1.5. This is pretty spicy, but let's give it another run. Yeah, again, I'm consistently probably around the one point. So it gives you an idea that when I'm having to be accountable for my sights, we can do this in about 1.6 seconds in dry fire mode for me personally, okay? So that's the basis of working through accuracy mode speed mode, which is speed modes where I spend a lot of my time, but then we want to spend, you know, a substantial amount of time too, making sure that we're still accountable to our sites. And so we bring it, we dial it back in and we make our sole focus at that point, what we see through the sites and where it is in relation to the target and making sure we're accountable for each site picture. And that is what you call real mode practice. When I'm getting ready for a match, then I actually do more real mode practice or match mode practice than I do speed mode or other things because the way I see it is I'm trying to mentally program myself for what's more realistic and I've, I should have already put in all the work to get me to that high speed rate ahead of time. When you're not, it's the night before or two days or even three days before the match, that's not the time to try to learn new things and do more speed mode practice. It's time to dial it back and make sure we're accountable for each site picture. All right, so I showed you how this could be done without the use of LaserX software, but now let's see how we can be more accountable for our hits and get some measurable data out of this fantastic software target on the wall. It's a one third scale USPSA target. And I'm standing at seven feet from that target. So this is equivalent of a seven yard target in real life. This has a delayed start just like my shot timer did. And we're going to go ahead and fire six rounds. All right, so that first go, I just went at a nice comfortable pace. I was paying attention to my sights for each shot and everything looked acceptable to me in my vision. And we can confirm that by looking at the shots on the screen and they are all in the A zone. Very good shots. My first shot was a 0.99, so just sub second. And then my last shot was 1.98. So I was a sub two second build drill. Now, even with the LaserX software, if I want to push the speed envelope and just see what I can do, that's okay, we can do speed mode practice with this as well. What that's gonna look like though, is I might tend to throw shots a little bit wider. So I have my hit area actually drawn to cover the C zones, the C and A zones both. I'm just gonna see if I can keep everything in the A and C zone. Shooter ready, stand by. And see how fast we can push it. All right, so going really fast. My total time is 1.6 seconds. That puts us back to where I said I was a moment ago doing this in dry fire and holding myself visually accountable only. My first shot was 0.76. And then again, that last one, 1.6. And then we see my shots were strung out a little bit more. I had two that went pretty low, but that's okay because I was focusing on the speed aspect, the speed Stand mode by. practice. Here we go, one more time. All right. A tad slower. 0.82 though, first shot. That's still really respectable in a 1.62 total time. So very consistent with the last one. And that time my shots were a little bit better, but I did throw one a little bit high. And so that's okay. That was speed mode practice. Again, dialing it back a little bit now, my focus is gonna be more on my sights and what I see in my sights. Okay, and I should caution you when you're using a laser training device like a cert pistol or a laser dot cartridge, 
you want to make sure you're really watching your sights and not the laser. It's hard to do. It takes some discipline, but if you can, that's what you want to be doing. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually partially close my, non, my non-dominant eye so that I, I obscure more of the target and it usually hides a lot of my laser from me. Okay, but here we go. Let's just see how we do this. Okay, so that was what I would call a real mode or match mode practice run. First shot draw, 0.91, and my last one, 1.92. A lot more realistic for me. And again, I am using a gun that is not perfectly alike to my competition pistol. That, the competition gun is easier to work the trigger on and things like that. But this is very respectable. And I was accountable for every shot. Every time I pressed that trigger, I saw my sights in alignment in the right location on the target. That's real mode or match mode practice. So if you want to develop speed, you have to work on speed. And I've given you some tools and some methods of how you can work on that. Then for it to be more realistic and useful for us, we then have to have some personal accountability for what we see in our sight picture every time we press that trigger. So match mode, real mode practice, work that into your dry fire as well. So this month's shooter rate challenge, we don't really have a specific drill that you're necessarily working on other than do, do the build drill like we did here today. That's great. But this is more about you implementing in your own personal practice the concepts of working on accuracy mode, speed mode, and real mode or match mode. All right. I promise you, if you take it in that approach, it'll make a big difference for you in your development of skill. And it's worked, it's worked wonders for me. I've, I've gotten to where I am currently and I still have growth to do. But I've gotten to where I am because of following a methodology like what I've talked about here today. 